Okay, it's brake pad day. Everything's in, sensors came in. Um, so this is probably the most level I can get the vehicle in this driveway is parking this way. And then I can use the lip here, do one side at a time, front and rear. And then just kind of chalk up the front tire so it doesn't, you know, can't roll around on me any. Once you get it in the air, you're reefing on some of the bolts and you don't want things to wiggle. But with the sensors, like I said, this one has one per pad. So when I bought them, I didn't know they came as a kit, which is great. So now I've got, here's all four sensors for either the front or the rear to come in pairs. So I'll have a spare set of sensors for the next time we do brakes. Okay, so here's pads. It looks like uh, this is the same as I'm used to seeing on like motorcycles and stuff. Maybe all the newer cars do it, but I should just be able to pull this top pin, unplug the sensors from here, uh, slide the pads out, push the pistons, and then slide the new pads in. So we'll see how well that goes. Uh, one complaint people have on these cars is this hard line goes into the arm here. So when you do if you do have to remove this giant caliper, uh, you have to unhook the line and then bleed it all out. So, I'm glad I'm not doing that this time around, but uh, in 20,000 miles when these pads allegedly wear out, then uh, we'll probably pull the calipers and paint them. You know, make them look a little more fun, I guess. Sporty, who knows? <laughs> but I, I kind of want to do them in yellow, so we'll do that next time and we'll get new fluid and bleed the whole car but for this time we're just gonna get some pads on and go you can see you know here's your sensors two per so yipper oh the other thing these caliper bolts on the back here uh rumor has it those are 200 foot pounds so another reason i'm kind of glad i don't want to take the calipers off this time around okay so here's that bolt I loosen it up um get it nice and tight so you have just a tiny bit of a gap, that way the more threads are engaged, and then whack over the hammer, and you'll see a gap on the other side. And you can either get something in here to poke, 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 or what I imagine is that they have a tool, right? There's going to be a, like a special tool, and it's going to have these threads on it, right? But no shoulder, so that it can pass through and push the pin out. Uh, without damaging the threads so we can do the same thing if i can find a bolt with this thread size on it that's long you can just pop, 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 pop that out and then pull our bolt um, that would be ideal yeah so i had a, a longer bolt just sitting in the garage threaded it in as far as i can and um i'll just turn the volume down if the hammer rings too loud Oop, it's in there it kind of popped because it got past the spring um, so now we can take that out. This popped up, like everything is getting pushed out. This might be really pain in the butt to, to, to push back down and put the bolt in, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let me uh, get this one out of here and see how it all pulls out. Ooh, there's a fart. See that spring? Don't line your face up with it. <laughs> I'd imagine that would Yeah, so I'll need two hands for this. I'll be back. Okay, so here's old versus new. It's old pads. New pads, you know, quite a bit thicker. It looks like the fronts probably really weren't worn that much. They still got the grooves in them. They're not down to the sensor level, so I bet the rears set this off. Doesn't matter. These are the, the Hawk LTS pads the ones for light trucks and whatnot so i decided to try those out instead of the ceramic uh, a lot of people said good things about them and that they're pretty low dust um, and then you can see too from here there's that metal clip right so we know that the the thick side of this goes to the pad surface towards the disc so we'll wait it will i don't know if i should clip these in before or after uh, but either way i got six pistons to push in so i gotta figure out how to do that effectively they might go <clears throat> I don't want to put something down in there, but off with a lift of the... Oh, <laughs> look how easy that is. Um, and of course, it suffers the same problem as other multi-piston brake setups in that you, know, you push one in and another one comes out, but they generally don't come out uh, as far as the other one went in. So, uh, if we want to do this the right way, we got to get the hood up. And we'll get the cap off the reservoir and make sure that this hasn't been topped off at any point because what you don't want is to be 
pushing your pistons back in and then all of a sudden fluids spraying all over the place and yeah it's ugly it's a mess so oh and we can look at my valve cover leak too the dealership's supposed to fix that but they keep pushing back this quarantine in the state so maybe i'll end up doing it myself but yeah you can see that, that fluid down in here uh, this valve cover is leaking oil and it smells so i have to run the ac on recirc so that we don't well so we're not gross so uh, near mineral hydraulic oil yeah oh, mineral oil he's only mineral hydraulic fluid okay yeah lots of space in there no it's not too bad but plenty of room each wheel we do will come and check and see how high up it's getting to make sure it doesn't blast all over the place all right so we're pushed together here's the new pad sitting in there yeah plenty of room um so what you want is these points of contact. So you can see right up in there, right up in there. They're gonna sit on this lip on each side. So a little bit of grease there. We want grease on the back, just a small film of it for where the, the pistons are gonna touch. And then we'll need a little dab of grease along these holes and then where the spring clip's gonna sit on it. So where those contact points for the spring and a little bit of grease so it can slip around. You don't want to go nuts on this stuff because you don't want it falling in and, and getting on your brakes themselves. Um, a lot of times in the past on cars that I cared less about, I didn't even use the grease. I just put them together and if it, you know, squealed at me once in a while, I didn't care. But this one, we're going to be a little more careful, get a little bit of grease on there just to make sure it stays nice and quiet. Yeah, I really need to order a tripod, it'll make this better, but you can see a little tiny bit of grease, tiny bit of grease, and I did a little smear per thing, and even this on the back, like, it doesn't even really need that much, it went a little heavy on it. And then just be careful that you're not smearing it onto your rotor when you put it together, right? Get in there, don't. Like, that's it, that's all it takes. We'll do the other side, we'll get our springy and our pins and all that kind of stuff back in place, and we'll be good to go. Oh. And as far as this pin goes, you know, it looks kind of kind of gnarly, and that's the advantage of like I have the sand blaster now, so I can take this, uh, clean it up, put it in the blaster, and, and get all these little. Um, it would be hard to see. But there's like little raised sections of just stuff, right? And it could be from a thin coat of grease, like we're gonna put on, and then debris hits it and it just hardens up. But we want to make sure that this is gonna slide in nice, so that we're not fighting it while fighting that spring pressure as well. Okay, so I clipped one sensor in. It goes in really easy. Just push it down until it doesn't go down and then, you know, it won't come out. Um, because that that spring's going to go in there and then this clips into it. And then we'll put this sensor in place and then route the wire afterwards. So we got a thin layer on the bolt, a little bit on each uh, part that's going to hit or touch so that when it rides along here, it won't squeak at us. And then I'll get um, a little extra in that groove in the middle where the bolt sits. We don't need to do these outsides, but I'm going to anyway to help keep it from seizing. Um, not that it would, it came out really easy. And especially with them cleaned up in the sand blaster, it should go right in and out. But we'll get this thing assembled and then we'll take another look at it. Okay, so there we go. Um, with this stuff all cleaned up, it was super easy. All I had to do was push on here with my thumb and see that it's possible to do. I'm just sitting on a bench, so it's not that bad. So you push on that, kind of wiggle the bolt in from this side, and then it'll pop right in the end, and it's tapered. So when you get to this edge, you just, I gave it a little bit of a tap with the hammer, just doop doop, and it popped right through. So now all I gotta do is tighten this 13 millimeter back up. Um, probably just standard torque, I'd have to look it up. I'll go and look it up, but um, yeah. Put the sensors in place, and we'll be done with this wheel and move on to the rear. This is pretty cool. This thing's got four piston rear calipers. It's pretty wild. <laughs> I've never had something like this. Um, yeah, it's odd getting nice stuff, right? You know, for one time in your life. But the rear one, just to show that that front one had the bolt, right? It screwed into the back here to hold it in place. And this just exaggerates how unimportant that bolt really is. Because <laughs> the rear one, they just have a little, a little pin here. It slides through and holds it in place. So I did pound it in, put it in the pin to make sure it doesn't wiggle left and right. And uh, I should probably be more careful with that. I've got, you know, I have some replacements somewhere in the garage uh, that would work, but it'd be nice to keep the OEM one. 
No, same thing. Judging by the pin being there in this end, I would bet that it doesn't pound out this way. It only goes out from this side, so we'll, bah, 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 we'll pop it through. Rinse and repeat, just like the fronts. Um, okay, so it does pound through that way, and it's, it's getting there. And there's a little, it might be hard to see here, we'll see when it's out, but there's a little lip. So it, you know, it can only go in so far this way. But it's like, I got the door pin, just a spare door pin to pound it out with, and it, it bent the damn thing. And it's mushrooming the end off. Like, I'm really having a whale on this to get it to move through. And it's because all this crap that's built up on the shaft of it. So, yeah, we're just going to have to keep pounding away, and it's going to shave it off as it goes through. Kind of pain in the butt. Um, I got two more door pins, but if they're going to bend like that, uh, I'm going to have to find something a little strong. This is a pain in the dick. <laughs> like I was able to get it far enough to get the spring out, but that thing's not moving, man. It's so tight through this hole. So it'll come out eventually. We just, like, I'm running out of stuff that's long enough to, to poke it. So I think what I might need to do uh, is find a screwdriver that's perfect size and just cut the tip off of it, you know, turn it into a, a thing to pound with. And Okay, so everything that I put through here to hammer on it with at this point is just bending. It just bends here, big pain in the dick. Uh, so we're going to try and make our own little press. So I got a bolt that just barely fit through because I had a tape around the tip. And I got a nut on this side. Um, the idea here being as we loosen this nut, it goes in this direction and it'll push that other side out. So um, it'd be nice to be able to film this and see if that's working. So, uh, da, 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 da. I don't have. Maybe I can put it on my knee. And prop it with my arm to hold this one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a human tripod. All right. Oh, then I can't reach the bolt. Okay. One day I'll get a tripod. Let's see if I can find some. Okay, we got a, a stool. That should be good enough. I really hope this works. This is a pain in my butt. It's taking too much time. Jesus. I think it's moving. I think I saw a little crusty come out. Like, what does this pop? Right there. What was that? Why did it do that? Was that the threads? Where did it move? Oh, it's moving. It's moving. It's moving. It worked. It worked. Yeah, I went and looked on watched a video of a guy doing these, right, and they got background music and all his clothes are really clean. <laughs> he just stuck a screwdriver on the end and he goes pop, 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 and just walked it out. So, okay, now I'm pushing on that pad. I don't want to break anything. So I think maybe we got past the worst part and it'll come out now, I hope. Anything still reach it? Okay, last straight door pin. Hopefully it's uh, let go enough that this will pop out. Oh yeah. Yes, yes. Oop, went away. Good riddance. Actually, no, we need that because I didn't buy replacements. There she goes. Come back. Yeah, buddy. All right. Yeah, look at see all that nasty crusties on there. The other side, I think we'll uh, we'll wire it. Get something. Get the wire brush in there and anything to try to get that crusty stuff off, so it's easier to get out. And this will be good to put in. There goes neighbor Dave. <laughs> He's got his truck all all tuned up. But uh, yeah, we'll clean this up in the the blaster so that. Okay, so same as the front, clean everything up in the, the parts blaster, sand blaster. So hopefully that means this will go back on. 
uh, really, really easy, like the front did. So, and then it looks like springs don't get in the way of our uh, wear sensors. Oh, look at that, it just slid right in there. Oh, that spring is tough. Yep. So, it's already started in that pilot, so we got it all the way through just with our hands. Um, hopefully having that bit of grease on there will keep it that way, but I doubt it. It'll probably be all nasty again when we have to take it off next time. Uh, there we go. And I had a pin. Where did I throw it? I'm like, oh, don't, where is that? Here it is. It's in my tray. So. And that's all she wrote. We're one side done. I think I'll do the other rear first since this was such a pain in the butt. That way I can end on the front where things will Oh, I almost forgot the sensors. So, same before, they, they fit in. Um, you want the thick side in towards the rotor. So, just goes in place, kneel by hand, clicks in. And this one. Come on. I don't want to push on top of the wire itself, and that one's got a lot more sticking out of it. So, I can get the screwdriver here and get on the plastic. There we go, popped into place. So, come on, boy. Okay, so this rear is a really good example of how these work because there's already a bit of a lip on that rotor. I'm probably pushing it a little bit, reusing it, and, uh, and not even turning it down. But it'll be fine, don't cry. Uh, but you can see right here, there's that vertical channel that the wire sits in. And here it is with broken away, right? It hasn't broken the wire yet. You can still, but you can see the tip of it. Once it breaks that, like the other side pulled out, or like this side where it went all the way through and broke it, now that it's not continuous. So this one wire will go to each, through one of these on each pad in series, one after another. And if any of them break, you get a light. So, yep. Probably chances are what's gonna happen because of that lip on the rotor is the rears are gonna set it off again and they're gonna set it off prematurely. So like these pads, you know, and you could push it, you could get a little bit more out of them, but really not that much. So I'm not super concerned that it triggered early. And it, Really, it's not that expensive. And to me, I don't mind if they trigger early because when they do trigger next, we're doing new rotors. So, 